September 23rd, 2015, I'm Dana Durnford, also known as NuclearProctologist.org, and you can find my videos at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. And so here's a 30 second trailer before we get started. And so I'll just turn the gain down a little bit. I had to get a new microphone. Um, I'm worn out. Six weeks on the ocean. I'm grateful and humble. And so pleased that this is all over. And so pleased that we get an opportunity now, in my eyes anyway, to have a conversation, to have a debate. And to see a better future for every generation ahead of us. And we couldn't have that without the information and the confirmation of the tidal pools of the coastline of British Columbia, of the bird species, of the insects, of the mammals, and the health of the entire coastline. And so, a lot of people probably don't understand because I've been on the ocean maybe 260 days in the last 365 days. And I used to blog literally seven nights a week, one hour Fukushima blogs. And, you know, we had 25,000 supporting documentations before I went on the ocean. We had done 9,000, I had done 9,000 headlines live on this channel. And... I've had over 30 videos knocked down on my site a couple of weeks ago, or two, a couple of months ago. I've been on the ocean for six weeks. And I covered that before I went on the ocean, each of the videos. And none of that slows me down or stops me. None of that sways me because we had 25,000 supporting documentations, 5,000 pictures, the nuclear proctologist. Uh, has around 2,000 of the pictures. You can download them usually underneath all of my videos. There's a link directly to TEPCO's website and you can look at the reactors yourself. And so we've never seen a, a complete meltdown on the planet before until Fukushima. And Fukushima, and I'll say hi to everybody in a minute, Fukushima is three 100% meltdowns. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown, a single reactor, and Chernobyl was a very small reactor, say one-third the size compared to any of the reactors in Fukushima in Japan at the Diachi power plant. Now, Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. That's why they got a sarcophagus over it, if you want to call it that. A containment over it, they call it, I call it just a, you know, show and tell. It's just a... a the building is deteriorated. They have another one that's going to go over that one. And there's a Wigner effect about radiation. It's like a screwdriver you buy at the shop. It's not magnetized. But if you lay it on a battery, it's magnetized for the length of that lifespan of that screwdriver. And radiation does that to material. And so, I, I you know, it's so hard to wrap your mind around what happens and why the tidal pools are so important to me, I'm sure. Because whales and porpoises and the mammals and animals and the fish, the salmon and the tuna and everything else are way up the food chain. And so if you were going to look at damage from an ecological disaster, you would look at the bases of the food chain, you would look at the nursery of that food chain, you would look at the, the, the smallest animals. But you got to take into consideration what happened. Was that this was unprecedented. This is no different than an alien attack upon the planet. This is no different than a meteorite coming at our planet. And we flushed that out with 9,000 headlines. And I've 25,000 supporting documentations. documentations and that's, that's just originally. I've seen days here where we gathered up 500 more supporting documentations. And so, 
the reason you have terrorist laws and, and the reason you have a nuclear holding sites because you don't have a waste site. You can't. There is nowhere to contain this stuff, this nuclear material. It's not waste because it lasts for hundreds of thousands and millions of years and billions of years. And 97% of the reactor lasts billions of years. The uranium. And so when you take an element and you put it through a chain reaction, it's different than the original element. And so a banana, a potato chip, a walking in sunshine, and getting on an airplane and dental x-rays have all been equated with man-made radiation. And you would, I'm sure you can remember in the media saying you would get more radiation from getting on an airplane or a dental x-ray than you would from a nuclear accident. And they would say you get more radiation from banana than you would from nuclear accident or more radiation from potato chips. They really do that all the time. They've been doing those same words, those same sentences for 70 years. And before I get off track here, I want you to think about the coastline of British Columbia in particular. So the coastline of British Columbia, right at the high tide line, the trees start right there. And so, for most of the coastline, the only shore and rocks exposed are when the tide is low. And if not, then it's a stretch of the coastline, 100 feet off the shore uh, from the tree line is the coastline itself. Because some, some areas are weathered that way. And so, at low tide, the rocks that are expo exposed uh, are, are vulnerable to the sunshine. And they have around 600 algaes kelps that uh, dominate that tidal zone. So when the sun goes down to 600 algaes and all the, the invertebrates, there's 6,500 of them um, that we recognize as the indigenous population of the coastline and there's around 4 million species in the ocean. So the species I talk about are the ones that are considered indigenous to the coastline of British Columbia and have been studied heavily by all the major institutions on the planet. Canada is, is the most privileged place on the planet, bar nothing on this planet. We don't lock our doors or our windows generally. We have we don't worry about getting pulled over. We don't worry about uh, someone shooting you in the street. We don't shoot each other in the street, except for rare, and these are usually alcohol-fueled, rare occasions. Canada has always been a privilege. We have lots of water and lots of land and we don't have a very big population, 34 million or something. And we have just as much land as America has. But I want you to understand why, why this is playing out the way it's playing out on our coastline. And now we've done this expedition, we've done up to 160 days on the ocean without coming ashore on the Fukushima's expeditions for life. And Elaine Campbell, you know, and Janet and Fred Saxon and so many other people, but those two in particular, you know, every time this operation grinded or was about to grind to a haul, they stepped up and withdrew from themselves, you know, enormous courage t to fund this and make sure that it continued on. And so, you know, that recognition, we can never forget how much of an importance that played. Because without that, we couldn't be what we're going to be and who we are. Without that absolute positive proof, you know, and, and it's been argued that Dana, after four expeditions on the coastline, that I had enough to make a documentary, and I did. Absolutely, 100 positively percent had enough material to make a documentary. But I didn't have enough to make the whole documentary, to tell the whole story, because I didn't cover the entire coast. And so I couldn't tell you the Zabalis or Gold River or Tassis or Winter Harbor or Cape Scott or, you know, the coastline, 460 miles of coastline had this or that or anything else if I didn't go and see it. And so, but by doing what we've done, we've done the entire coast of Canada, 15,000 miles over a whole year period, looking at the damage. But the one thing that I realized that I don't talk about is why the radiation impacted the coastline so, so heavily. And I just want to crawl through that as quick as I can. 
I'm just worn out the boat I got so much to do tomorrow and the next day get my stuff off the boat and finish that up and then unpack everything I got here <laughs> but every night from here on out that I can get up I will be doing a live stream at 8 p.m. Pacific Canada time and at the same time I'll be producing a documentary and a book and at the same time I'll be setting up uh, as I get close to finishing those um, travel plans to go out and push this because it's not going to push itself and so I have to withdraw <laughs> upon myself every aspect of my life in order to and uh, you know I can't even catch up to the last year of my life uh, it's just you know I come home and I don't recognize home and Zoe did she never shut up for the first two minutes <laughs> she almost lost her mind she wanted to get out of the truck she knew where she was that was awesome but and I'll just go back to the coastline so I can move on because I keep digressing away from it so here's how this works like Japan had studies done on why farmers couldn't grow uh, food and what it's the farmers feel the, the radiation was sticking to the rocks and nothing could uh, and so the roots would normally run parallel and, and wrap themselves around the rocks and everything like that but they couldn't stay there because of the radiation the young healthy roots couldn't get a hold of it because they were vulnerable to radiation and so once they removed the rocks from the soil they were able to grow a lot of food there but of course it was radiated and they can't eat it or sell it nudge nudge wink wink and so now the coastline of British Columbia so the plumes never stopped coming out of Fukushima and we still have three 100 percent meltdown Chernobyl stopped after 10 days Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs Fukushima is three 100 percent meltdowns the buildings were snapped they were destroyed by the earthquake the fuel pools were snapped in two major damages in all the buildings from the earthquake itself and the tsunami took out the infrastructure for 500 miles you know and you gotta realize six weeks on the ocean it's hard for me to do a really articulating video tonight and have all kinds of pictures and bling bling and, I, and it took me four hours today to get the microphone to work and I couldn't get it to work with all my old uh, sets like that I already had made so I have to do everything new and that's fine too and that's the future in a few days I want to get my senses about me and orient in the boat and the boat the, the bed stops diving into the waves all night long because um, the bed doesn't and the house doesn't stop right now it's really bad when you close your eyes it's like you're diving into the waves and it's just it's been so rough it's been unimaginable rough and I'll play some background a minute of that it's exceptionally rough uh, and this is what I dealt with most of the time and you know I'm limited to the and so the time zones I'll finish that one <laughs> that's five times I digress so here's what happens is the radioactive fallout comes in and hits the west coast it hits the Rocky Mountains and everything on that west side of the Rocky Mountains starts to wash not all of it a lot of it goes in your estuaries and your drinking water gets caught up on coast on shorelines of rivers and, and, and rocks and everything else um, and but a lot of it is reliberated over and over and over and makes its way down to the coastline and so if it's low tide this stuff is running over those now now up to that point it's all forest and so the radio, radioactive fallout at low tide, you know, there's an immediate die-off, we know that now. Within two weeks, scientists in America in huge tracts of coastline that were studying uh, the invertebrates and the marine lives in the tidal zones notice a, a mass mortality event. And that came out a number of months ago. Once again, I've been on the ocean in the last 365 days, I've been on it 260 270 days and the rest of the time getting ready to head back out five expeditions five emergency expeditions and so the, the radioactive fallout comes in it hits the coastline at the low tide zone and it's all trees above it but at the low tide is where it's a very vulnerable creatures and once it eradicated them it kept continued to fall out of the sky and it coated the coastline this stuff sticks to the rocks now just i'm not talking about any particular isotope because there's 2000 of them you need 2000 geiger counters calibrated to 2000 2000 2000 
uh, individual isotopes that we know about, there's 10,000 classified, but the 2,000 that we know about, we don't worry about the classified, they can't be too bad because they're classified. <laughs> and, and so the problem being is the life of the isotope would dictate how long before something can grow back there. But the issue is that was the nursery. And so we took out the nursery of the ocean. And so all the eggs and larvae and small fries and, you know, which is the soup of life anyway, that was big enough to go looking for a place to hide, had no places to hide anymore when normally there were 600 algaes and everything else there. Now, so we done the coastline. I'm not going to try to cover that tonight because I haven't even got the, the pictures imported onto the computer. I do got the hard drive sitting up there. just... It's been non-stop since, uh, and it's going to take me a couple of days to get up to the point where I got everything off the boat and I caught up with my own personal uh, life here. And but every night we'll do the live stream that I can get if I don't fall asleep. <laughs> uh, and so that's just me talking. So let me keep going here because otherwise I'll get lost in the freight. That was the cover picture. And so the model up in the corner of the world is Noah's model. That's only cesium 137 and iodine 131. And, you know, they didn't include the 10 times more iodine 132, the, the 30 times more iodine 133, or the 31 times more iodine 129. That's produced for every iodine 131. And the cesium 137, you see, which is in the model, um, and there's 100 times more strontium 90. And strontium-90 sequesters in your bone, it acts like calcium. And cesium acts like uh, potassium, so it sequesters in your muscles, in your organs, in your heart. Um, and so there's been an extreme amount of heart attacks, and particularly young young athletes. And nuts for art, Lonnie, um, doing a wonderful job. And she's an absolutely adorable lady, and she's extraordinarily articulate and uh, adamant and passionate. And so I just wanted to put that out there to make sure everybody understands that Lonnie has taken it to a whole new level. And we see her making huge gains as the future progresses here and understands the urgency. And like it's it, the people that are capable and have the courage and have the fortitude, uh, that's something that's that kind of is natural to you, you end up taking these chances and, and you make these falls. It's like skating, you are going to fall, you are going to hurt your bum, and everybody is going to laugh at you, but you're going to get back up and do it again, and again, and again, <laughs> and again. Because that is how life, uh, life is cruel, and life will throw you. Like me, I just went down the coastline of Canada, most of the way on a 9.9 .9 kicker and you know 10 to 18 foot seas I did wait till the wind came down trust me but you know it was a 20 mile jump and then I'm stuck there for the low tide and so you know I picked my timing and we pulled it off because I just didn't want to go back and we need to get this done and you know if I'm there I'm not going to pass that opportunity if I'm going to get it done I'm just not going to say oh well this don't work and I hit every mechanic on the west coast of Canada trying to solve the problem and didn't even get it diagnosed. Um, it was a little depressing that they would send a guy who's disabled back out on the ocean in a broken boat. Uh, it was, was really disappointing for me. But I knew I had two kickers on the back of the boats and brand new kickers that I can trust and that I wouldn't put myself in a predicament. Um, anyway right because the data had to come back because as long as the data came back that meant i had to come back too and so i used to look at it that way got to bring the data back so be careful take your time there's no rush you can wait it out you're prepared you've been through this before kind of attitude and so just hunker down three beach lines and a big friggin anchor stupid heavy anchor that ain't gonna go anywhere it is hell to get back um and i see one night you know few weeks back and um, it was so bad all day I couldn't eat and that and that night I was desperate for a cup of tea but I still couldn't get a cup of tea couldn't even have a cup of tea it was that friggin rough 
and uh, the next morning it was only six miles to safety and I was pinned down in this little nook on the wild west coast I knew I'd be okay there I'd just go ashore if I had to and I probably should have but uh, I was worried you know it was so rough there anyway that I wasn't worried worried because I had three beach lines and the anchor but I was worried the weather might not break <laughs> before I ran out of food and there was twice that that happened to me where when the weather broke I had to go looking for fuel food and water and so we done everything morally and consciously that could be done and everybody out there has put their back to the wall and gave me the push and the final push at home um, you know I can't say enough about Janet and Fred Saxon and Elaine Campbell and the future will prove that anyway that I can't and I'm hoping that in the near future I'll pay back everybody every penny um, you know that would be the coolest thing imaginable is to pay back everybody that donated how cool would that be and still have the foundation up and running and strong and back in their faces and so I figure if I get out there and push everything and do a tour not only do people get a chance to ask me questions and hopefully you know and that's what I found out about the coastline of Canada this particular trip I was recognized uh, four times and two of the hounds were in Fukushima Corey came up to Fukushima and bless Corey and and John Wind up in, in Tofino uh, had me over him and his lovely wife and I really enjoyed that that was a huge relief for me to get off the boat for a day and go sit down with people that I can have a conversation with and that were extremely tuned in and so I feel really good about everything I feel that I didn't leave anything behind that I didn't uh, I didn't miss any opportunity to get everything possible that I could get and I got what I could get which was like a hundred species uh, and so Berkeley Sound was supposed to have another 1800 species and these are the indigenous population to the coastline there's over four million species in the Pacific Ocean once again let me reinforce that for people the species I'm looking for are the ones that are indigenous year-round to the coast of Canada and they've been highly studied and we've covered every one of those areas that was studied we've managed to hit them those coastlines those stretches we've done 20 miles just for six weeks straight every 20 miles of the entire right from Alaska to the other end of Canada the entire coast bar nothing that is crazy that anybody pulled that one off and that's what we done because we knew that this had to get done and you know so now that I know for sure definitively positively without any kind of shadow of a doubt whatsoever nobody can tell us and as I get the pictures up no one can tell you uh, any different that the, the impact is is extraordinary unsustainable untenable and uh, frightening to say the least it's an extinction event in every shape and form the birds are missing off the entire coastline there was no migratory mass migratory of millions of birds and all the animals just 38 whales in the last four months usually only eight whales die a year I posted that video the whale slapping his tail you gotta realize who I am spent my entire life on the ocean I've worked in almost every industry on both oceans and I've never seen a whale do that that doesn't mean it didn't happen and I can't remember I'm just saying that's how rare that is for me to see something like that and there was two of them there they were about 40-45 feet each the humpbacks and I got a lot of pictures that will get up on the site that are definitely going to be uh, worth looking at of that and the whales up at um, at uh, Cape Scott at the top of Vancouver Island now I'm just talking off the side of my head but visually because I haven't went through the pictures but visually they, they looked emaciated to me and they hung around at one spot and I, I there was a spot to get ashore enough spending a night there because the engine was broke down and I was hoping to, to solve it in the morning and I didn't and I went around um, to Winter Harbor with the kicker and so we pulled it off but not without you know there's no courage without fear and 
if it was the other way around where there's a ton of courage with all fear then I would be the most fearless person on the planet but I'm not you know and I struggled um, the whole time it, it, I was tested in, in every shape and form the motor would break down in the most unimaginable the, the worst spots imaginable and so it didn't take me long to have the kicker running all the time <laughs> and just in case the big one went down again and you could get 18 miles of good and then all of a sudden two miles of hell and you give up on it because you can't get it to work and it was just torture but I wasn't going to give up so we kept going now I'm home the expeditions are all over five of them and I think you know the focus now will be on many things health uh, education is so important for everybody that they have to get past and like it's so hard to have a conversation about radiation or Fukushima because it's such an alarmist topic it's almost impossible not to sound like you're fear-mongering no matter how you try to talk about it no matter who tries to talk about it that's the instant it's like a trigger and that's I understand that and, you know I went through that is why we have 25,000 supporting documentations that's why I blogged out 9,000 headlines that's why I have 5,000 pictures of the reactors it's because I had to find out whether the fear mongering mongering or bananas potato chips from Wagon and Sunshine which one was was uh, on the right path and so bananas potato chips Wagon and Sunshine getting on an airplane got nothing to do with ingesting radiation and so that's that turns out to be 70 years of those same sentences that's what they always tell you. Oh, like a banana. Oh, you get more radiation from a banana. You get more radiation. And so that person is manipulating you on purpose. They're educated and they know better. They're mocking you. They're, they're insulting you. That's a slap in your face. Um, and they get a paycheck for doing it. And they don't see it that way. They, they have contempt for you. They don't care about you or themselves or their loved ones. So all reactors are hemorrhaging into your community all the time. That's why uh, studies shown uh, women are six times more likely to have breast cancer if they're within 15 miles of nuclear power plants, and that children are 20 times more likely to get cancers, particularly leukemias, if they're within 15 miles of nuclear power plants. And that's why the Americans, in a, I can't remember the spot, I'll find it, the headlines for the next one, uh, stopped a study about cancers around nuclear power plants uh, in the last couple of weeks. It's because they got 70 years of lying to you, telling you it's like a banana, telling you it's like a potato chip. And I mean, and we know who does that right now is Jay Cullen and Ken Buesler, right? Um, you know, and like Jay Cullen right here, and I'm going to play a clip, 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 I'm going to play a clip of Jay Cullen. And this is 2013 in late November uh, on CBC Radio. They pulled it off to CBC Radio. This clip is edited, and so it's a little over a minute long. Uh, but he talks about how there's a thousand times more natural radiation. He does this every time he opens his mouth, no matter where he's to, he'll say in these same sentences. He'll say there's a thousand times more natural radiation than there is man-made radiation, so there's nothing to worry about because there's a thousand times more and worry about that. But, I mean, that's what you you are acclimated through to, through genetic superior selection, yeah? So when you eat natural radiation, your body basically off gases. It's called homeostasis. It off it's like cruise control on a vehicle regulates the speed of the vehicle or the thermostat regulates the temperature in your house. That's the same principle. And so I'll just play the clip for you so you can hear. But I needed to give you some context because you're not listening to the whole thing. It is on my site if you look for it. it and 30 videos were removed. I don't know if that was removed or not. Here we go. Jay Cullen. Click on it, Dana. The, the levels of radioactivity that are actually being measured um, are a factor of a, of a thousand below the concentrations and the activity uh, of those naturally uh, occurring radioactive elements. And have there been any other nuclear uh, meltdowns nearer the ocean that might provide some useful information on how radioactive materials, uh, you know, travel or what have you in, in, in oceans? Well, I, I'm not aware of any meltdowns uh, uh, right next to oceans. Uh, we, um, the only sort of point of comparison that we have is, is uh, Chernobyl in 1986. Um, if something similar were to happen uh, on the coast of Japan, it would be a very serious um, situation to find ourselves in. And, and so that was Jay Cullen in 2013, November, saying if there was a melted reactor, 
that would be very serious. Well, there's three melter reactors, right? And so Jay Cullen is funded by the nuclear industry here in Canada, but he's a sitting professor in the University of Victoria. And so he gets 600 samples at $600 a sample of water. He doesn't test the few algaes that are left on the shoreline. He doesn't test uh, the invertebrates or anything like that, or the krill or the phytoplankton, the basis of the food chain, oxygen, and carbon sequestering chain uh, for radiation. No, 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 he goes there and takes water. And he's only testing for one isotope. He's not testing for 2,000 isotopes. And there's no one can prove that he's actually doing anything because he lies constantly. He says there was no melted reactor, but if there was, he says that there's a thousand times man made or natural radiation compared to man made, so shut up. If you tell me that's not disrespectful and not very lying, then you got a lot to learn about the very basis of what we talk about. This is Ken Buesler. Um, right behind me here, Ken's Woods Hole Oceanographic. Now, Jay Cullen was also Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, chair leading lapdog. And these are the, the speakers for North America. That's the only two people that gets any traction in the media. These are not nuclear scientists. We have all kinds of nuclear scientists. And a nuclear scientist wouldn't say that stuff. But here was a candid uh, presentation that Ken Bursler was giving at an institution where he actually says there's meltdown, the three meltdowns, melt throughs, and melt outs. Because they had lost all cooling, that's the cause of the explosion, the overheating, the eventual meltdown and melt throughs. But when you're doing that, you're putting water, first salt water, then fresh water on reactors. They're leaking, the basements are filling up, there's groundwater, all mixing and directly discharging. And I'll show you data. And so three meltdown, melt throughs, melts. Melt out. And so, I see everybody in the comment section. I'm going to come over and say hi and good night in a little tiny bit. It's going to be a short stream tonight. Uh, so, you see the center picture? That's what it looks like apparently on the inside of the building behind me. That's Unit 4 stripped down before they put a building around it. And just, just a reminder, let's go have a quick boo at all the reactors for something to do before I call it a night. you got to hang on, Zoe. You can't jump from up there. Don't jump from up there. No, you stay right there. Lie down. So that was Unit 1. I'm just going to run through this stuff. Uh, this is Unit 1. This was 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. We'll just run through that. This was a heat signature of the melted reactors. The buildings were all destroyed. Uh, this is unit two. This is 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. This was the reason he evacuated the plant, was unit two. That was headline, and I covered those headlines many times. That's unit two. You can see the heat signature up in the corner. Hang on, Zoe. This is unit three. You can see it totally uh, destroyed the entire building, wrecked the, the whole infrastructure permanently. And they said, no, no, there's no damage to the fuel pool. Well, the fuel pool was up high. There's nothing left up high, and then the temperatures reached 7, 8, 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And so nothing lasted, nothing could survive it. And then the fuel pool melted right down through the reactor and on down through the containment, on down. Because it's so hot, there's nothing on the planet can contain it. They call it a containment, but you can't contain. It's only meant to contain around 17, 1800 degrees. You can't contain 7, 8, 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And fuel pools can go into chain reaction and turn into a, um, a China, uh, China um, what do you call it? I can't remember. China syndrome effect. The building's detonated. Look at this detonation. Hang on, I'm going to have to go let Zoe, I'm going to let Zoe down. Hang on, Zoe. I'm coming over, buddy. Yeah, I got you. Here we go. Oh, weirdo. I got you. Man, I got your big butt. You okay? I'm not opening the door because you're going to go barking. You're going to take off, and I want to see you for half an hour, and all I hear is Zoe out there, bark, 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 bark. You'll be okay. Hang her down where I can keep an eye on you. So this is uh, an expanded image. Um, unit 1 is over to your left, all the way over in the corner. That's Unit 1, 100% meltdown. That's Unit 2, 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. That's Unit 3. Uh, it's over here. Maybe that's unit three in there. There's a little bit of unit three right there. 
Look at the walls that broke off. These beams, you were able to turn an SUV around on those beams. That's how big it is. These buildings were 10-story buildings. That's Unit 4. That's Unit 4. Now, remember what I was telling you about Unit 4, what I showed you about Unit 4. They, they, they stripped that down, right? And they say the fuel pool was inside of whatever's left there. But anyway, let me keep going as we say goodnight here. Um... Oh, let me go back and finish off what we're doing before we say goodnight. And where's that folder? There's only a few more pictures to run through. Now, they say that fuel pole there. You see that? It's inside of that unit four. It's inside of this. Look, all the way to the ground. Right? That's unit four. And this is what they done. They stripped it down. They built the thing on the outside of it. So if you build a thing on the outside of it, how does it look like that on the inside? Huh? Huh? I don't have the heart to go scream in the night or tomorrow night or the night after. That's that's gone from me. I don't have the heart to be cursing and swearing anymore. I just don't have it in me. I'm just I just don't have it anymore. It's time to reach as many people as we can, so I'm gonna wind, slow it down, calm it down, and I'll keep things moving lively. Uh, as you can see, the building's totally destroyed, right? Completely, utterly destroyed. That's destroyed. The building, look at it. It's totally destroyed every way you look at it. But yet, it looks like that. The roof does on the inside, yeah? So you see why I do things I do, because why that might be acceptable for other people is not. Other people can ignore it. I can't. Why are they lying, <laughs> you know? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Not me. You can, though. I'll probably tell you, too. But, because that's the cover-up. So you don't think about Unit 1, Unit 2, and Unit 3 is 100% meltdown, melt-through, melt-out in the chain reaction. That's why we can't put a sarcophagus over Fukushima. And that people like Ian Goddard and James Colbert, who says there's nothing wrong, but yet has Fukushima update as a website. Oh, there's nothing wrong. Everybody got a website dedicated to Fukushima and Ken Buesler and Jay Cullen. And so the people we put our fate and our hopes into have too often turned out to be the controlled opposition. And then I go out and I get together with all of us, because I couldn't do it by myself. I could do all the physical stuff by myself, but I couldn't put this whole operation together by myself. And, you know, like Kate at the Fukushima Hounds, who I certainly... You know, I do I do put her link below and I mention her all the time for people, but it's still not enough for what she has done and continues to do and understands how to do it and the importance of doing it and the perseverance that it takes to do it and try to have your own life. Uh, and as always, uh, a pleasure to talk to and uh, to visit with, uh, like uh, whether it's on the phone or a website. And it's just because it's genuine. And so, the, the most of the opposition come from these two, Jay Cullen and, and Ken Buesler, both of these from Woods Hole Oceanographic. The people who told you BP wasn't bad was Woods Hole. The people who told you the dust on 911 wasn't bad was Woods Hole. Woods Hole has been at the center of every controversy on environmental um, uh, corporations, nightmares out there created by corporations. And a corporation... Uh, that's not a stock exchange has human rights and that's like people like Google don't go to jail and get a criminal record because they're a corporate personhood and that's an illegal amendment to the slavery law right Justice Hugo Black wrote eloquent dissent in 1939 of how absurd it was that an amendment meant to free slaves from an oppressive government was used by corporations to oppress the sovereign people which is you by manipulating a slavery law to give corporations human rights I mean that is the secret uh, and has always been sitting right there to, to take away the power that the corporations wield upon our society. So if a Starbucks and McDonald's or Walmart and a few other of these corporations come into your community, every mom and pop shop is at a business. And then the corporations put their money in offshore accounts and they don't pay state, federal, local taxes. And so your local community, town council, cannibalizes the little people in the community, the property and everything else 
So property has to keep going up in order to keep up with the amount that your local government steals because the, the corporations won't pay any uh, local, federal, or state taxes. And then the money is in the offshore account is used to pay fines because nobody can get a criminal record or go to jail. And so I, I know I just went off into one of my little ha ha moments. And so let me come over and say good night to everybody. And let me stress how proud I am to know everybody and to have your support and to be back and have the ability now to know that we are in a moral fight and a justified fight for the very existence of the species that are left and that are clinging and that the Pacific Ocean you can't save it even if you did stop Fukushima but we have to stop Fukushima there is nothing more important and that the future generation would say why didn't we focus in on stopping yeah we can't change what's happening and happened but we can change what continues to happen by removing the homeless who do nothing but create accidents and releases and are used to, to make mistakes and then sending all the Harvard and Yale and Berkeley and Stanford and Oxford and MIT moot pieces, you know, the, 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 the big shots, to send them in there. I don't care if they die of cancers. I don't care if they die of the 18 or 100. You know, like cancer, like Lorraine Moret would tell you, is cancer is the mouse in the room. The 1800 autoimmune deficiencies is the elephant in the room. Alzheimer's, dementia, autism. Diabetes, heart attacks, uh, failures of the kidneys, of your organs, these are all, and the problems and the diagnosis associated with that, you know, are very time consuming and, and organ transplants and everything else. Uh, and so all of this is highly, there's 1800, don't worry about cancer, that's 5, 10, 15 years down the road, worry about the 1800 autoimmune deficiencies that are recognized. Uh, and I mean the studies were done on the animals, you know, Dr. Raymond Gilmetti killed beagle dogs and beagle puppies for 35 years and they know exactly what several atoms of plutonium or americium is going to do to you and how long it takes to kill you. Because I covered 84 of those studies on this website, you know, it's disgusting, but they're not the only ones out there. And so there's 4.3 million, the three biggest publishing houses on the planet with 20,000 publishing outfits under their belt and so they, they get the copyrights from all your universities and institutions and you go to university you get a library that's just a little tiny library they might have paid 400 500 or a million dollars for that library to lease it off elsewhere but 4.3 million other academic studies three a minute are published and locked away you won't get to read them no matter what university you're at you only get what your university library buys for the curriculum of your school hi shiny Ken. Yeah, I love you, honey. Thank you for everything you've done. Um, really, truly. It's sad, unfortunately, but you did do the right thing, see? It's just, just like Janet and Fred. It's sad that, and they knew that, and you knew that, you know? So, Chuck, Miss Milky the Clown, Bert D, and uh, Indy, Indy, India, I'm on the East Coast, so many years, they don't know, even know, I can't pronounce your name. No, Andos. That hole is where they throw the truth. That's uh, Woods Hole. That's where they throw the truth, down Woods Hole. That's a funny one. Dr. Goodhart, who never stops. Groose me. Uh, standing foot. Hey, buddy. I'm your author. Missing Sky. Atom. Selene. Yeah, thank you, folks. It's great to be home. Trust me. Kate, and you'll find Kate's link below the site, it's the Fukushima Hounds, it's under all my other videos, if you can't find the links, the bunch of links I always have on there, Kevin Blanche will be down there, so please support Kevin, he doesn't stop, he's done everything right, his whole life, Starlight, and he needs your support, he's the real deal, go find his radio interviews, you'll see what I mean. We're privileged to have him on the planet, let's take advantage of it while he's still here. He's been to hell and back. And so, anybody I didn't say to tonight, good night to, I'm sorry. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm going to get a cup of tea and call it a night. Get up tomorrow morning, finish off the boat so I don't have to touch that no more. And in two or three days, I'll start uploading pictures and all that other stuff. 
uh, will take probably a month and a half to upload all the pictures. At the same time, I'll be making the documentary of the book. At the same time, I'm going to be blogging every night unless I fall asleep. I'll be back the next night, though. And I'll probably get, I'm looking forward to it. That's what I want to do. And I'm so happy that I got this first stream done. Trust me. Hugs, everybody. Take care.